they succeed. The people that do succeed are the people that come after and learn how to apply that innovation in an effective way. That's what it is. Okay, this is kind of interesting. They asked entrepreneurs, what is the most motivating factor in why they're going through this hell? <laughs> right? By the way, it is a lot of fun. I don't want <laughs> But it is. It's hard. You know, I know, you know for myself, I had my net worth at risk. But I was younger, too. I thought I was a fire pilot. And I see one of my friends go down and smoke. And I go, boy, was he stupid. Okay? When you're younger, you have that. When you get older, you go, oh, that could be me. Right? So um, having a little fire pilot viewpoint is not all bad. But in any case, what is it? So the choices are, number one, getting rich. Two, fear. Fear is great. Believe me. Holy mackerel. I had a stent put in me when I was 43. It was fear. It was definitely fear. Power, making an impact, maybe there's something else. What? Take a shot. D. 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 What was it? D. D. Making an impact. Making an impact. Yeah. It's surprising. You know? I mean, a lot of people might say, you hear about this, I want to be a billionaire, I want to be a billionaire. Really, what's motivating these people is they want to make an impact. It doesn't matter if they're creating the next great sausage patty or it's something to cure cancer. These people are motivated. And they need to be motivated because if you're not really excited about your idea, no one else is. No one else is because it's hard, it takes a long time, you're going to have to innovate, pivot, all that stuff. Yeah, you need to be motivated. I'm so impressed by entrepreneurs. Uh, I, I can't see. Really? Oh, that's it. Oh, why is entrepreneurship important? How am I doing on time? I don't want to bore you. You're good. You're good, Jim. You good? Okay. Yeah, so I'll breeze through some of this because I haven't talked too long. So, why is it so? This is kind of a message for economic development, but really for everybody. So, they did this study out of Kaufman. Foundation, which is based out of Kansas City, foundation devoted to entrepreneurship, and they found something really interesting. They looked at job generation in this country, and they found that the vast majority of new jobs were created by companies five years and less. So it turned out, for every Apple that had already proved its business model and was adding a lot of companies, there was a Chrysler offset in it. And the net difference <coughs> came from those small, innovative companies that were adding jobs. And it's a good point. So I ran my company, we grew into about 80, 90 million. We had 300 plus employees. But I know what my motivation was, was not hiring more employees. My motivation was, how do I get more of the same output with the same number or fewer employees? Right, it's called efficiencies. I was driven by efficiencies. But on the other hand, if you're starting a company, you have to hire employees. There's just there's no choice. You have it makes sense why these early stage companies are the generator of jobs in our country and so often overlooked by our policy agents. People hate me in Salem because I keep telling them this story that entrepreneurship needs to be part of our economic development strategy. It's absolutely critical for us and our children. So I talk a lot about innovation and entrepreneurship should be the third leg of the economic development school. So we know about recruitment. OK, we've been doing that for years. Retention, absolutely. Let's help the companies that are already here. But that third leg of the stool, my opinion, is innovation and entrepreneurship. It's our seed corn of economic development. It's while we invest in it. Problem is, most startups fail. So they start 100 ideas, maybe one's a home run. We talked about that earlier. So that sounds pretty grim, but guess what? The odds can be improved for entrepreneurs. They've done some national research on it. And again, it's not rocket science, but it's important to know. What are the ingredients that make for successful entrepreneurs? If you have these ingredients, your odds double. And you might say, if you're a cynic, well, that's one in 50. Right? But that's still a significant improvement. And we think it makes a big difference. We've seen it work in Central Oregon, Atlanta Valley, on the coast. So I'm an advocate for it. These are the three things. The best practices from national studies. One, entrepreneurs need access 
to people and programs, right? People meaning mentors, other members of their team, advisors, special services, attorneys, accountants. They need that to be successful. Second, robust networks, right? The number one problem of entrepreneurs, whether they're in Klamath Falls or Portland, is their isolation. They need to be connected to their peers. They need to be connected to their resources. When you connect people in a network, their odds of success go way up. And third thing is access to capital. Why I've helped, why I've devoted so much of my time. It's funny, my wife gives me bets. I said, Jim, you're retired. You're working just as hard as this long as you But you know what? I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And one of the things we know all entrepreneurs need is access to capital. Those three ingredients. If we provide those three ingredients in the ecosystem, entrepreneurs succeed. I've proven not just only in Oregon, but across this country. This is interesting. You can't see this chart. So it's basically money and advice. So actually, of those things, turns out advice is even more important than money. Right? So it goes back to that VC model I was talking about. They were pouring tons, millions of dollars of other people's money into ideas that had not been proven. What they're saying is if you're in the startup phase, what you need is lots of advice. You need to be in programs. You need peer mentoring. You need advisors. You need programmatic support. Small amounts of dollars. Once you've proven your business model and you're in growth stage, pour in the money. Right? Think of it from an investor standpoint. Prove to me that your business model works, and I'll write you a check. It's a much bigger risk if you're saying, I got this great idea, Jim, but I haven't demonstrated to anybody that anybody will actually pay me for things for this guy. Right? So if we can provide, if we can wrap entrepreneurs in the support they need, and a big part of it also is support to their peers, fellow struggling entrepreneurs, their odds of success. And by the way, there, you can't see this again, but there are a ton of programs out there. But the problem is entrepreneurs don't know where to go, and they're not prepared to go, right? So if you're going to go ask for money, you better have your 10-page slide pitch done and ready and ready to deliver. You have one chance to make a good impression, right? So you need to know not only where to go, but you need to be prepared. And one of the things that Kat's looking at, which I think is going to really help this community, is I think you call it a coach, but we call it a venture catalyst. It's whatever. It's somebody who's dedicated to entrepreneurs to, to Connect them to the resources that they need. That, that is a critical ingredient to be successful. And it gets even more complex. And if we were teaching in class, we could go through my favorite slide, the business funding ladder, which goes everything from bootstrapping, friends, families, and fools, grants, crowdfunding, microloans, seem to name all the way up. So the, and the point of this is uh, it's not just money. It's the right kind of money. Right? You need, depending upon where you are in the development, what is the right kind of money for you? Is it equity? Is it early stage debt? Is it some other, there's hybrid forms of these as well. So what is the right kind of debt? on your stage of development. What kind of company? You need help to make that decision. And that is this key role of this catalyst, this coach, who can help entrepreneurs to not only prepare them and connect them to these right resources. So, finally, they say, here's the takeaways. Wow. Okay. This, this, if I actually leave you anything, this is what. First, um, lots of, it's a little bit like the army, right? They tell you what you're going to do, then you do it, and then you kind of review it after you that. So, first off, lots of great ideas, but what makes a difference are great teams? It is impossible, I can tell you, impossible for one person to be successful with an idea. You have to have a team. Got it. Stubbornness is great, two-edged sword, right? You have to stick to it. But you also have to be open enough to admit to yourself that you may need change. You may not want, you may, you're not the right person to be the CEO, right? 
maybe you need to pivot on your business model. If you, you have to keep open-minded, you have to continue to adapt. Those that adapt the fastest will succeed. Execution is key, right? We talked about that. We have the world's greatest idea. If you do not execute on that, it will never see the light of day. Focus is key, especially if you're like me, right? Lots of things. I'm over here, I'm over here. My wife has to say, Jim, remember, you gotta focus, right? Focus. The lady D, it's okay, we'll overcome that. Something in entrepreneurs, we all have to overcome. Advice is more important than dollars, right? And if I was to give you one piece of advice, if you were interested in entrepreneurs, my advice would be network, network, network. People will help you, but you gotta go, you gotta build that, that group, that network that you can build on. Um, what resource is best for you depends on where you are in your development, right? So people talk about incubators, accelerators, angel capital, who knows? You need really somebody to look at your business and say, this is the right resource for you, for where you work at, and the kind of industry that you're focused on. Network, network, network. I mean, like, great, if I had a takeaway, that would be a network. And there is a statewide network. When you get this person that's gonna help entrepreneurs, that person's gonna help connect entrepreneurs, not only regionally, but across the state. Right. Work the system. There is a ton of free stuff out there. Take advantage of it, really. And you know what? Oregonians are great. If you, you know, you may think somebody would never help you. I get people reaching out to me all the time and saying, hey, I heard, you know, you might, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll, I like seeing people succeed. And Oregon is like that. We have, we, most people around here are willing to help. Prove your business model, then add cash to scale. So much of the problem is, People say, I know this is the best idea. Maybe they're even able to raise the capital. It's a mistake. Prove your business model first, then scale. And finally, you can be successful in what we used to call K-Falls. I don't know if you call them K-Falls at the moment. That's why I always say, we call them K-Falls. And uh, I think increasingly, um, it, it, it's you know attractive places where people want to live. That's where entrepreneurs are going to be. You will see this community change in 20 years. I, I, I mean, I've, I've seen it across the state, and I've spent a lot. I go everywhere. I go to La Grande, and I go to Burns, and I go to Florence on the coast. It's changing. So take advantage of it. I'm not saying it's easy, but this, this will change. Um, so I'm a great supporter of entrepreneurs. I, I think it's just so part of the culture of America. And what I love about it is it is the ultimate meritocracy. Even though it is true, it's as important as who you know is what you know, but ultimately, you have to have something that somebody else is willing to pay you money for. And I love that. I love that because it doesn't care if you're an old person or a young person, it doesn't care whether you went to college or you went graduated from high school, doesn't care your color, doesn't care about your political beliefs, doesn't care about your sexual preference. I mean, it is the most egalitarian and meritocracy-based. It's also at the same time the most brutal. Because it, I almost went broke. I didn't think about it. I'm glad I didn't think about it. But I could have destroyed, you know, I kind of figured I'd fail. I'd just get up and start again. You have to have that attitude. But it's, it's brutal, but it's also Thank you for your time. Happy to take any questions. So, if you're comfortable yelling, we're going to let Jim take questions. <coughs> Turn the mic around too. 